All right. In this video, we're going to talk and learn about Module 3, Lesson 5, which is Simple Interest. And the reason why we're learning about simple interest in this module is because a simple interest equation is the same thing as a linear equation. It has a constant rate of change. Okay, the benchmark that we're focused on is solving real world problems involving simple compound and continuously compounded interest. We'll get to compound and continuously compounded when we get to um, exponential functions in second semester. So this particular um, video talks about the first two pages of notes, the 3.5 simple interest notes and the 3.5 simple interest notes continued. Once you finish these notes, then you're going to work on the simple interest practice that will be assigned to you in Canvas or should be part of your packet. All right. So simple interest is the total value of an investment over the time, over time, and can be calculated with the formula A equals P multiplied by 1 plus RT. So that's great, but what do all these letters mean? So A stands for current amount the current amount that's in the bank account or in the account or investment. We're going to highlight that in green. P stands for principal or the initial amount. So the amount that you're putting into the investment. How much are you starting with? How much are you going to save from? R stands for your annual interest rate. R is going to be usually displayed as a percentage. And if it is a percentage, then you have to convert that to a decimal. And then T stands for time in years. Okay. So notice I've highlighted and color coded everything so that when we go through our notes, we can continue to color code and remember which parts of the equation or formula they go into. So example one, we're going to use simple interest. So Tanya opened a savings account with $2,100. The bank offers a simple interest rate of 6%. You'll notice I'm highlighting these the same color as I did on the previous page for what they represent. Then we need to find the amount in Tanya's account after each number of years. So P here is our principal interest, our principal amount, which is 2100 And our R rate is 6%. And to convert that 6% to a decimal, we're going to divide by 100, and we get 0 0.06. Now we need to evaluate our formula, A equals P multiplied by 1 plus RT with the given values. So we have all of our highlighted um, variables, and now we're going to plug in for P and plug in for R. So our P is 2100 and our R is 0 0.06. We are not going to use the percent. We're going to use the decimal. Okay, now we need to simplify that. So that's just going to be A is equal to 2100 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.06 T. And then we need to distribute that 2100 to the two terms in the parentheses. So 2100 times 1 is 2100. 2100 times 0 0.06 T is 126 T. Okay, please note that one term has a variable, the T, and the other term does not have a variable. So that's why we cannot combine those two terms. Okay, now we're going to use this equation to evaluate A and B. So A is three years. And we need to plug in 3 for our t now. And so in our formula, a is equal to 2100 plus 126t, we're now going to replace the t with the 3. And when we do 126 times 3, we get 378. Now we're going to take that 2100 and add 378, and we get 2478. And that's how much is in the account after three years. Then we're going to do that same question for eight years so we can determine how much money is in the account after eight years of being invested. So our t is going to be eight so we're going to replace the t with eight. 
Then we're going to multiply 126 times 8, and we get 1,008. Then we're going to add that to 2,100, and we get 3,108. So after eight years, there's $3,108 in the account, in Tanya's account. Okay, now we're going to try the check. I want you to try the check on your own. Jonathan has opened a savings account with $1,300. The account earns 11% simple interest annually. What will be the balance of Jonathan's account after 15 years? So try this on your own. Go ahead and pause the video now. Plug in the values that you know and solve for A. All right, now that you've gone ahead and tried that on your own, we're going to fill in what we know. Our principal amount is 1300. Our rate is 11% or 0 0.11 and our T is 15 years. So there's our formula, A equals P multiplied by one plus RT. And now we're gonna plug in our values. And once we do that, we find that our account is going to be worth $3,445 after 15 years of being invested. Okay, did you get it right? I hope so. All right, example two. Now we're going to write a simple interest equation. Okay, Jackson opened a savings account with $5,000. The account earns 9.5% simple interest annually. After how many years will the balance of the account be 15,000? Round to the nearest tenth if necessary. So P here is 5,000. That's the principal amount that Jackson is going to invest in his savings account or place in his savings account. The rate is 9.5% or 0 0.095 as a decimal, because remember we take 9.5 and divide it by 100 to get our decimal. Now we're going to evaluate that with and replace those numbers with the variables and simplify the equation. So A is equal to 5,000 multiplied by 1 plus 0 0.095 times t. We're going to simplify that to be 0 0.095t multiplied by 5,000. When we distribute the 5,000, we get 5,000 plus 475t, and that is our equation, our simple interest equation. Now what we can do is if we're given T, we can find A, or if we're given A, like in this case, we can figure out how many years it will take until we reach that amount. So we're gonna substitute in 5,000, dollars $15, for A in the equation to find how many years it will take for the account to reach a balance of 15,000. So we're just going to substitute 15,000 for the A value. Again, we already have our principal amount and our rate was already calculated into this equation. So I'm going to take out A and put in 15,000. That's going to equal 5,000 plus 475T. Now I need to subtract 5,000 from both sides because I'm trying to isolate the T or get the T by itself. So I get 10,000 is equal to 475T. Now I'm going to divide each side by 475. And when I divide 10,000 by 475, I get 21.05, which had I read the directions, which said round to the nearest tenth, I believe, it would have been 21.1, because 21.05 would round up to 21.1. So after about 21 years, the balance of Jackson's account will be 15,000. Now what I want you to try on your own is I want you to check to see if you can figure out after how many years his account would be worth $9,750 and how, much, how long it would take for him his account to be worth $17,000. So go ahead and try this on your own and then come back and check your work. All right, now that you're ready to check your work, let's review. We're plugging in the 9,750 for A and that's going to equal 5,000 plus 475T. So we're gonna subtract 5,000 from both sides. Then we're gonna divide by 475, and we find that 
t is equal to 10, or after 10 years, he'll have $9,750. In question B, in option B, we need to find out how long it will take for him to reach 17,000. Again, we're gonna subtract 5,000 from both sides. Then we're gonna divide by 475. And then we find that t is equal to 25.26. Again, I didn't read my own directions that I wrote, where it says round to the nearest tenth if necessary. I rounded to the nearest hundredth, shame on me. So the correct answer would be 25.3, or after about 25 years, Jackson would have $17,000 in his bank account, okay? Now you'll have some practice problems in Canvas or on in your packet for you to complete. Once you do those, um, turn it in for a grade. Thank you.